Ladies and gents, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Zobra Potato, and this is Acropolis the Archaic Age. Indeed, this is a newly released game. It's published by Composition Game Studio, and it is basically a grand strategy game and a, uh, a city building game sort of rolled up into one. So, very, very interesting concept. I have done the tutorial, it's not very good. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna try and uh, and see what we can do. I'm gonna play on normal. I'm gonna play on normal because I don't feel like it. I'm, I'm 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 better than easy. I mean, who am I kidding? Let's play on easy. Um, and I'm also gonna be playing as Naxos. 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 There's the problem with this game is that there's a whole bunch of Greek places that I cannot say. Corinth is quite easy. Athens is quite easy to say. Uh, and Sparta, of course, is quite easy to say. Uh, but I'm going to be playing as, as Naxos. Um, yeah, so basically, the whole setting is ancient Greece. And you basically play from about 680 BC um, until, well, I don't know when. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't got to the end of the game yet. Um, I've just done the tutorial. I know how to play. I started off, uh, I started off a little playthrough just to make sure that I know what I'm doing. And, uh, and yeah, here is the game. This is the board. Um, it's, it's sort of a, an interesting, an interesting little 3D board that you can sort of pan up and down. You can see that it's, uh, it's fully 3D. Um, I very, very, very much like it. I think it looks really, really cool. Um, anyway, you can sort of see that each, um, each sort of zone, if you'd like, is a different polis. Right, so this is the polis of Sparta. This whole area is Sparta, and then there's a different area um, for each for each area. Now that will become apparent as we go, but for now, um, there's a whole bunch of different uh, different polises, uh, like little 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 empires, I guess. And we need to navigate our way through. Now, of course, this is the you know the world view, and this is how you interact with people. If I click on if I click on people, we can we can do a couple of different interactions. We can we can trade. I'm going to talk about trade in a little bit, but for now, um, we'll sort of park that there. However, what's also really cool about this game, as well as getting the sort of the sort of political view um, on the on the on the map, you can also go into your city. How cool is this? So this is our island of um, of Naxos, and we have a city, and we can actually build up our city as we go. If I go into this construction tab here, you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can actually build in our city, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so we can just we can tailor our um, our production needs. Um, our trading needs by building extra buildings in our city. I think it'll become fairly apparent. The concepts in this game are pretty basic to understand, I suppose, uh, but it's not stopped me getting confused at least a couple of times, so hopefully we'll try and work things out together. Okay, so the first thing that we probably want to, to do is identify what we actually need. So, you can see if we, if we hover over this, unfortunately it doesn't give you a, a you know, an at-a-glance view of how much of each resource you've got coming in and how much you've got you've got going out. So food, for example, um, is is pretty important because you need to feed your population, but it can also be used in trade as well. So, as I say, we'll talk about trade as we go. Um, so we've got food, we've got wool, we've got olive oil, we've got pottery, we've got wine, we've got wood, we've got marble, and then we've got metal, right? So each of these, we've got some coming in and then some going out. I am actually going to let it run to February, just to, uh, just in, in, going to increase the speed, just so that we get an, a representation of what we've got coming in, because I don't want to make any decisions based on what I don't know. So we pretty much get four food each month, we get three wool each month, we get two olive oil each month, uh, and there is some consumption on that as well. Uh, pottery, we don't get any pottery, so we cannot obviously trade pottery. Uh, we don't get any wine, and we don't get any wood, uh, and we do get marble. However, we're currently, as you can see under exports, I can't hover over it, it's just there, uh, we're currently exporting all of our marble. Okay, so that's kind of like a brief overview of the materials up there. Let's talk a bit about here. Respect, um, this is not really a big deal, but at least not from what I've um, discovered anyway. Uh, it's basically a whole bunch of things that can uh, impact your respect, your geopolitics, your relations with your populace, um, and it will increase revolt risk if you have low respect and you're conquering a whole bunch of areas. So that's that. Um, administrative ability. This is just basically the number of actions or 
the number of actions that your administration can undertake. So for example, trade routes all cost one administrative ability. Doing research and stuff, that costs an administrative ability. There's a whole bunch of stuff that sort of relies on you to have a consistent number of points. These points don't come in every month. You know, they, they, there's just sort of a finite number of points and each of them can be assigned. And if you unassign them, then they go back into the pool. Pretty simple. He's an understand concept. Um, we'll sort of roll with this as, as we go. Uh, soldiers. Soldiers. This is something very, very cool indeed because there is actually a combat system in this game. Uh, not, a, not an actual combat system where you see little dudes move towards each other, but there is a combat system nonetheless. And we are absolutely going to be doing some conquering. That's exactly right. Um, there's a maximum amount of manpower, uh, just like EU4. So you have a maximum amount of manpower, you get two soldiers per month, and that's uh, actually impacted by a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, your humble home, for example, and uh, the average abode, uh, that gets us income, it gets us soldiers, population, all of that good stuff. So yeah, we can, we can influence that. We can also build uh, barracks and stuff if I go here. Uh, where is it? Barracks. Yeah, here we go. So we can build barracks and that will give us more soldiers, etc, etc, etc. You get the idea. That's how it works. But it's pretty much, it's pretty much a maximum and it builds up to it over time. Pretty easy to understand. Um, technology and concepts, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second, but build points. Build points I've not really found to be, um, too irritating so far, but basically every time you build a house or an anything actually, uh, you can see the very first requirement for all of these things is a certain number of build points. Obviously there is the, uh, there is the, the item components that are needed after, uh, but for the humble home for example, we need 60 build points. Build points I've never really had a problem with, I, I've not played this game for very long, but certainly in that time I found build points to be a little bit useless, didn't really understand the need for them, they were just sort of another thing which you need to spend to build a to build a building, but we'll see how that goes uh, as we progress. And then, of course, um, we've got uh, we've got our treasury, and uh, we measure the currency in drachma. Drachma is the the Greek currency of ancient times, um, and slightly modern times, I suppose. I believe it was 1990 something where they adopted the euro. Anyway, uh, and before that, it was the drachma. So anyway, yep, pretty much uh, that's that's our treasury. We have ingoings, outgoings. It's pretty pretty basic stuff as you would expect in a strategy game. Okay, so let's talk more in depth about trade. Now trade is trade is interesting, right? So firstly, this is our screen. We can we can we can buy let's in fact let's use Delos as, as an example. Delos is here. Uh, our neighbor and an ally actually. We already have a uh, an alliance with them and a trade agreement. So the way that trading works is that you can only buy and sell one item with each area, right? Now that's, that's an important note. So for example, with Sparta in this specific area of Oyetolos, I can buy, well actually I can't, Sparta's a terrible example because Sparta doesn't like me and don't, doesn't like anyone I don't think, I just don't think they like trading. Anyway, let's go to Athens and uh, Sun Sunian, yeah? So, for example, if we were to trade with these guys, which we could set up a trade route right now, we would only be able to sell one pottery per month, and we would only be able to buy one wool per month. Now, we don't need wool, and we don't really want pottery, so that's not a trade route that we're going to be um, that we're going to be investing time and energy in. In order to make this simple, they've got two different map modes. We've got the buy map mode, which shows us what we can buy um, with all of the different. Uh, materials highlighted in different colors. So for example, if we wanted to buy pottery, then there's only a couple of places that we can actually buy pottery. See what I'm saying? So we need to make sure that we're choosing our, our trade routes very, very carefully in order to make sure that we're getting the resources that we need in, and then also to make sure that we're selling the resources that we have excess of, and we want to ideally do that to, you know, the same, the same area so that we're not wasting two trade routes. You know, we're buying something that we need and we're selling something that we, that we don't need in the same trade route. It's not always possible, but the fact that there is a big map and we've got a lot of options to, to trade with is um, is pretty nice indeed. Uh, there is also a selling map mode, which shows us um, what stuff we can sell and to who. So that's, that's pretty much the way that that works. Uh, pretty easy to understand. Uh, there's also an alliances map mode. Um, of course, we have just Delos at the moment. And then we've also got the opinion map mode. Delos absolutely loves us. Everyone else is distinctly meh about us. Um, trading is pretty much 
yeah, it's it's pretty essential, and I think that there is a there's a good amount of uh, of money to be made in trading, but we need to be very very careful with the trade routes that we set. Uh, it's nice that we've got a, a little trade balance here. Currently, we're only exporting marble, and as such, we're making a good bit of money. Uh, but yeah. We've only got the option of four trade routes, so we need to make sure that we're using them super, super wisely. Okay, moving on. Technology and concepts. Uh, yeah, so each month we get some more technological progress. and We can invest in a technology which gives us more tech progress. Uh, it gives us one less build point. It increases uh, uh, our state cost, which is the running cost of everything. And, uh, and, it, and it decreases our admin ability by one. So... That's if we want to speed up our technological process. Uh, we uh, progress. Uh, we can also choose individual concepts. You can see that it's not not very clear, but the the, the slightly orangey ones are the ones that we can currently choose from. And in order to select this, um, you know, we will need to sacrifice four admin four admin cost, right? So again, it's just sort of allocating these points and making sure that we uh, we get exactly what we want out of. Uh, out of out of what we or out of what we do uh, so yeah this is an overview of the village uh, just to to see what's going on this is all of our uh, this is all of the areas in our homeland so all of these count as little different villages I believe so we got a couple there 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 exact exactly so so that's basically just a, a rough overview of exactly what we do um, income soldiers controlled areas if we conquer anywhere and um, this this will show up we've got a, a a brief overview of what our income is what our expenses is and what's really important is that we can buy admin ability we can buy build points and we can buy respect uh, if we have the money and build points to do it so uh yeah it's 200 drachmas and 50 build points to expand administrative ability and it's 100 drachmas and 20 build points to uh, increase respect by one uh, also, uh, 30 build points for 100 drachmas if you want to buy more build points. So there's a lot of options in terms of what we can do. Uh, our ambitions, this is just the sort of, I guess, little side quests that we need to do in order to be successful. Um, so there's regional power, con control two areas apart from your city, control Paros, uh, blah, 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 blah. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And we'll talk about this. We'll talk about this as we go. We don't really need to worry about this too, too much at the moment. Um, trade partners, we know that we only have one trade partner currently. And, um, and releasing states, that is also something that is possible. So without further ado, I think that we should probably go back into the world and, uh, and, and think about what we're going to do. Now... Now, 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 now. What I am quite conscious of is that we will want to expand our city. We will want to build. We will want to build houses. We will want to build, well, a whole bunch of stuff, really. There's a lot of really, really good stuff. What are our warnings? You have available trade routes. You have a lot of administrative ability. Yes, I know. I'm about to address both of those things in this sweeping action. Um, so we basically have a surplus of food. We have a surplus of wool. We have a surplus of olive oil. And nothing else. We're trading pretty much everything else. Um, we don't have any wood coming in, and wood is a key component of pretty much everything here. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we don't have enough wood for. So I think it's probably worth us trying, trying to get some wood. Now, what color is wood? No. Wine. Metal. This is the problem with this map mode, is it is it is unbelievably difficult to determine exactly what is what. Ah, green is wood. Dark green is wood. Okay, fine. So, if we have a look at dark green places, we could buy one wood and sell one wine. Well, we don't really want that. Now, this would be a good one for us. Uh, we need to have a positive opinion before we can trade, but that's not the end of the world. We can we can influence we can influence opinion by paying off the politicians, but that would be a good one. So this is an example of the trade route that we'd be looking to um, to 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 make happen. Uh, no, no, no. That's another good one. Um, although we don't really have any marble coming in at the moment, uh, these guys are not wanting to do it for some reason. Yeah, so the area the area base is, is two, and then the location makes it super, yeah, difficult to justify doing it. So basically, the closer that the 
the closer that things are to you, I do believe uh, they, I do believe they allow you to trade more. So that's the sort of annoying thing that we have to deal with. Um, yeah. Okay. So pretty much we we don't have that many options. This is probably one of the best options for us, actually. Well, let's try and improve relations. I do believe that we need, uh, what is it? Lose 10 drachmas. Yes, let's do that. Okay, let's do that. Let's run it for a month and let's get positive trade. Perfect. And then let's start immediately trading. So we're wanting to buy wood, which is going to be minus one drachma per month. And then we're also going to sell olive oil. Now, it's not, you know, we don't break even on the trade, so to speak, but it is still, it is still good for us if we can... Um, if we can just buy and sell at the same time. So that's great. Pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with developing that trade route. What else is it that we need? I'm not really sure that we are in super desperate need of anything else currently. I mean, that'll increase our wood by one per month, which is not a lot, but it's 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 enough. It's enough to, to not really complain about it anymore. Um, so let's just sort of run it for a month and see that trade route develop. Yep, it'll, it'll decrease our uh, administrative ability. And uh, our treasury will start to see the uh, the increase, which is quite nice. Uh, or should I say the decrease, which is not so nice, but it'll only be a, a small decrease. So we pretty much need to try and find, we need to try and find a, need to try and find a route which will allow us to sell off a whole bunch of wool. So let's go to the sell map mode and let's try and find some wool. So we can sell two wool to, oh, we can sell, ooh. That's not a bad, that's, oh no, sorry, I'm, I, it's so confusing, so I don't want to buy olive oil, I just want to sell wool, let's trade with you, I'm going to sell you both of my wool uh, per month, and I would actually love to sell you wool as well, but, because we still have one wool spare, but we're of course on four trade routes now, so, that's pretty good. I feel like that's a pretty darn good place to be. Uh, we've sort of sold off some of our excess resources. We've now increased our income to 3.3 um, a month, which is pretty good, actually. Pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. We need to start building up money, not as soon as possible, but we need to start building um, building money up as we go. Embarrassment at the Olympics. Oh, no. Disappointing performance at the Olympics. Our performance this year's Olympics was quite pitiful. Our participants ended up at last or close to last in every event to make matters worse one of the participants was obviously trying to cheat but took offense by the allegations and made a scene it would seem the reputation of our polis has taken a minor blow because of this that is indeed slightly disappointing cool okay um in terms of in terms of our ambitions let's have a look at our ambitions we need to control paros where is where is paros that's the real question ah it's just across the pond they have three allies. And one of their allies is Delos. So, in order to get Palos, that's gonna be that's gonna be a significant problem, actually. Speaking of significant problems, we need to try and see if anyone does want to be our uh, our ally. We need to try and expand our horizons so that we can eventually uh, try and capture Paros. Obviously, uh, I say obviously, it's not immediately obvious. But you can see here the potential number of soldiers that they have. So we, of course, have a potential number of 1,857, and they have a potential maximum of 1,350. So I'd probably be looking to try and conquer one of these smaller states. You only have one ally. You've got two allies. Who's your one ally? Oh, you guys are allies with each other. Okay, so I mean, that would potentially not be the worst thing in the world. Let's try and improve relations with you. Yes. Let's try and improve relations with you. Great. It will bring us closer together. Indeed it will. Decrease speed a little bit. Uh, although I do think that playing this game in uh, the maximum speed is the way to go, purely because you're covering such a large period of time. Uh, technology and concepts, I... Do I want to invest in the technology? I don't feel super committed to, to, to working in the technology. It allows for two areas to be focused at the same time. We'll talk about focus as we go. Um, 10 years to remove. 20 years to remove if we select a concept. 25 years. Plus one trade route. Secure warehousing. Plus one trade route plus 3% state cost. I'm going to take that actually. Let's do that. Let's remove. Let's um, select that, con uh, that, uh, that, uh, that concept. So that's pretty nice. 
Uh, we are investing, or we're not investing currently towards um, the next advancement in tech, although it would be pretty good. Um, tyranny. Well, it doesn't sound pretty good, does it? Uh, but it will give us a whole bunch of new concepts, and it will give us a whole bunch of new buildings, and to administrative ability. Let's do that. It only increases, only increases uh, our tech research by a little bit, but we've got money coming out the wazoo currently, um, and we need to, we need to try and spend it. Okay, so we're, we're working on relationship improvement with you. Yep. Let's continue to work on relationship improvement. There we go. Um, if we were to propose an alliance, we would need uh, at least 62 opinion. A trade agreement requires 56 opinion. So that's certainly something that, uh, that, that is, that is long-term. Now, if we propose a trade agreement with these people, then they will give us more favorable terms. So I think that we should probably work on improving relations with you. And that way, fingers crossed, we can uh, we can get slightly better terms on our um, on our trading agreements. There's really nothing to do with money at the moment. Money is a component of some buildings, I believe. Um, not the humble home, uh, but it is a requirement of yeah the trade port, for example, that requires 350. So there's no real like honestly, there's no real pressure to do anything with our cash currently. So what we're going to do is we're sort of just going to hunker down and make sure that we're spending uh, we're spending our cash. You don't have enough space for some resources. You have available trade routes. No, I don't. Oh yes, I totally do because I totally um, I totally got that concept. Um, so what do we want to do? We've got we've got a whole bunch of food coming in. We do have a, a whole bunch of food coming in now. The problem is is that our food supply is capped off. So what we should really try and do is we should try and build ourselves a. Not spacious housing, not fishing dock, not barracks. Where is it? Warehouse. Townhouse, market, warehouse. Yeah, warehouse. Here we go. So um, so that would pretty much be, be what we're looking for. Uh, a market or a warehouse, actually. We need 10 pottery to make that happen. So let's try and find somewhere that we can buy pottery and sell food. That would pretty much be the the ideal. The ideal. So buy, so food, food is... Uh, no, sorry, selling food, selling food, buying pottery. So what is pottery? What color is pottery? I feel that this is one of those things that I will just uh, get quicker with. Pottery, wine, so pottery is this dark, this dark, this dark color. This dark brownie color. Okay, so there's nowhere that we can sell food and get pottery. We could... We could sell marble. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Let's trade with you. We're going to sell two marble. And we're going to buy one pottery per month, right? But of course, that means that we're now promising six marble rather than what we've got. So I'm going to scrap you. Get rid of that trade route. Modify this trade route to confirm that modify that trade route to bring that down to there because two marble here gets us 2.2 however two marble here gets us 2.7 because we've got favorable terms with delos because they are our uh, our trading partners so we're going to try and sell three marble to you one marble to you we're going to buy one pottery that's just i think the better way to do it uh, and that of course leaves us space to set up one more trade route which of course we want to do uh, as food because we've got a whole bunch of food currently now, i'm looking for somewhere okay yeah ios yeah let's do ios perfect because that allows us to sell two food and we've got food in abundance really and there we go we got rid of one of those little markers nice we still don't have space for all of the resources that we've got coming in but that's unfortunately the reality of uh, of things so, Treasury is looking very, very healthy at the moment. As I say, it's just a matter of trying to trying to make sure that we, we're using our money wisely. So, I'm going to put this into five times speed and just sort of let things zip away. Uh, I am conscious of the fact that we have troops just sitting around and I do want to use them. As I've sort of already, as, as I've already touched upon, um, I want to attack this place. 
They've only got 450 troops. And now they've got zero allies. Did they break their alliance with um, with these guys? Paros. Paros is allied with four people. Yeah, I need to try and get my... Um, try to get myself some allies. Maybe Tinos. I think you would be a very good ally, actually. Let's improve relations further. Good stuff. You're welcome. Improve relations again. Improve relations once more. In fact, can we propose an, a, a trade agreement straight up? Uh, increase trade volumes, lower transportation costs requires one administrative... I presume that's administrative point, but I, I don't know. They will not accept unless their opinion of us is at least 67. Okay, so we need to actually improve our relations with them just one last time. Come on, there we go. Cool. That's great. So, if we were to propose an alliance, um, they need 84 in order to do an alliance. But a trade agreement, they only need 67. Let's do it. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our um, number of administrative ability. But that's not a problem. That's not a problem. And now, let's propose an alliance. There seems no reason not to. Um, I mean, the fact that they can call us into battles, that is slightly problematic. But that's not a big deal. Uh, and there we go. So, if I was to have a look... We can now actually bump up the number of uh, the number of bits of wool that we sell to three, which is very very nice indeed. We still have a surplus of olive oil, but that will pretty much that will pretty much get rid of all of our wool, which is great news because it means that we don't have to store extra wool. And we do have one extra administrative ability. Let's or one too many bits of administrative ability. Let's stop investing in the technology. It's not a big deal if we don't get this as fast as we need it. I mean, we're only going to get a couple of extra buildings, and that's about it. So, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, not going to worry about that too much. I don't know what overextending on administrative ability does, but it probably doesn't seem like a good idea just to try and find out what it does. Okay, so I think that on that note, ladies and gents, I think we're in a pretty darn good position going forward. Yeah, pretty, pretty happy with that. Let's run the thing just to get over the month. And see what our what our treasury balance is plus three point nine. So that is that is some pace. I'm really really happy with the way that things are going. Uh, what is everyone complaining about? You don't have space for some resources. You have a lot of available build points, both of which we're going to address in the next episode. But for now, ladies and gents, my name of course has been Obed Potato. This has been Acropolis, the Archaic Age. I'll see you next time. Bye.